A narcissist designs their mask with pieces of their past. Narcissist puts together a fabrication, a fiction, a image, if you want to say. Like, think of it as like those images that you see that are made up of like millions of little pictures. And you like stem back and you're like, wow, it's like a giant like face or a ship or whatever it might be. You look at that and you like get in really close and you realize like each like little like color palette and changes all these little pictures of whatever it might be around the globe or a family member or like it could be like whatever and so you you get closer and you realize it's made up of a lot of pieces that's how the narcissist mask actually is put together you know a lot of times it looks really great but it really is kind of like this frankenstein put together piece by piece by piece of different attributes of different relationships of pieces of different people from different relationships that they hurt that they used and that they abused the narcissist will go through many different stages building that mask and designing it and, and honing it in so that it fits the needs for them and it makes it easier for them to hide who they really are inside. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. We do that on several different platforms on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can look at TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and you can follow us on all those platforms under Raw Motivations. If you haven't had a chance, check out um, rawmotivations.com. If you want to meet with me like one-on-one, -on -one, would love to be able to interact with you, be able to talk to you there. Also, would love to have you on the new app that we have, which is called the NARC app. It stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It is a community of like-minded people that are growing, healing, changing, and helping to give advice and encourage other people along their way, along the journey. I'd love to have you interact and see the different courses that are on there about boundaries, about healthy dating after abuse, about guilt, about gaslighting, and all different things to help you understand and get a more well-rounded knowledge of what narcissism actually is. But not just the courses and exercises, but also accountability of tracking your no contact, of writing stuff down in a journal inside the app, interacting with other people, getting advice, joining our weekly lives that we have in there every Monday, and then interacting on a monthly basis as well with a giant group coaching where you can interact with other survivors, other coaches, be able to learn, grow, heal, and change and develop on a day-to-day -day basis. Love to have you part of that. Just go to narcapp.com, N-E-R-C, app.com, narcapp.com. would love to have you there and be able to check that out, okay? So anyways, we were talking today about developing the mask right? And how a narcissist develops and fabricates this image that they want to put together for everybody to see. Now, sometimes that image might be, you know, I'm a great dad, or I'm a loving wife, or I'm a perfect businessman, or I'm a great, you know, whatever it might be, the list goes on and on. But the idea is like putting something out there that's fake, that's not actually real, or doesn't have a depth to it that a normal, honest person would. Lots of people ask, like, wouldn't it be easier just to be honest? Like, why build a mask? Like, what's the point of that? For a lot of people, it would seem easier and it would be logically easier, but emotionally and mentally, that seems far from the truth. Think of it this way. A lot of times I've explained it, uh, an empath who is vulnerable might have that uncomfortable moment of like, oh, this is this is vulnerable for me to share. And, my, and how I've described it is like an empath being vulnerable would be like a paper cut. A narcissist being vulnerable is like you're chopping off their arm. Like it feels like a life and death difference because of the things that are actually underneath that they're hiding from. You see, when we talk about being honest and not having a mask and not putting up a fabrication, that honesty ends up leading to truth. Like what is the truth? What are the facts of the situation? A lot of times the truth and the facts leads us to be like, hey, I have guilt because of what just happened. Guilt then leads to shame for the narcissist of like, I feel bad because I am bad. You have the aspect of guilt. When, when you put up guilt is like guilt, I did something bad. Okay, and then you have the aspect of shame. I am bad. It switches it. It changes it. And as a result, the narcissist is typically putting up a defense mechanism even a mask, a defense mechanism to run away from that shame and guilt and not be impacted with the possibility of that accountability, that responsibility, and that truth. You see, a lot of the mask is shame avoidant. It's the idea of like, let me put this up so I can appear a certain way so I can avoid the possibility of feeling shame on myself. So they'll create a barrier. A barrier between shame and vulnerability, a barrier between the things that actually at times they crave for, but they're unwilling to engage with because of the fact that they're unwilling to be honest. 
Being honest and being vulnerable are some of the most terrifying things for a narcissist because that leads people to see, hey, there's actually shit inside. And a lot of times a narcissist doesn't want to see that and doesn't want to acknowledge that. Well, you see, the mask that a narcissist built, they're custom made. They're custom designed for each person on a day-to-day basis. A lot of times that will involve the the movies you watch, the music you listen to, the political affiliations you have, the the, the colors you like, the the food you want to eat. Everything comes together. And a lot of times this is in the form of like mirroring, of like giving people like, hey, like this is what you want. So let me show it back to you. But for a narcissist, it's normally pieced together, piece by piece, trying to figure out what is going to be the best way to lock you down and to secure that supply in the relationship. Because you have to remember, they're made a lot of times individually. However, when you see a narcissist go from relationship to relationship, or you see them go to the next person, you might be like, wait a second, it doesn't seem like they change that much. It doesn't seem like they're different. Because at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. What matters is understanding that that mask is there. Reason why a lot of times they're not super different. Okay, it could be could be polar opposite. You could go like it looks like this, then it's completely like this, or it looks like this. In the next relationship, it looks like this. It could it could go either way. Okay, but a lot of times people get confused when it doesn't seem to change. When they're like, it's the, he's the same person that he was with me as he is with her. Like she was the same person on that last relationship as what she is now. And a lot of times that confuses people. Sometimes the reason why they're the same person or the same the majority of the mask is still there is because it worked i mean that's just the small like harsh reality of it is if i can use a mask to be able to lure you in and to trap you and you like this then i can use it to the next person and see if that works as well maybe i know after a period of time that this habit this idea this concept always works so why not keep using it a lot of times you'll see a narcissist go into the next relationship and they'll use the same mask and then they'll mirror different aspects of you. They'll, they'll use an attribute of something that you do. They'll interact in a certain way that'll make you feel better because they're reflecting the same thing back to you. Now, oftentimes when we talk about mirroring, we talk about that a, a narcissist will mirror the aspects that they want or that they like or that they, that they feel like they need in their life. And that's not really the case from what I've seen. Okay, a narcissist might mirror in one sense. It's not because they want something or because you're so great or because you have all these great attributes. A lot of times people are like, oh, well, they attacked me because I'm so great and I'm so wonderful. And like they just wanted to steal my steal my light and they wanted to steal like this part of me and this part of me. And honestly, like from a narcissist, like, no, not really. Like a narcissist a lot of times could care less. Really, a narcissist, what they're looking at is the attributes and things that you have that they can use to leverage more control over you or that they can learn so they can put into the next relationship to keep them longer in that abusive cycle. You see, you have to understand like a lot of narcissists are really observant. Not all, but a lot of narcissists are really observant. What they do is they see and they construct the mass based on the things that you want, based on the things that you like. When it comes down to it, that building the mass doesn't feel hard to a narcissist. It feels normal. It feels like this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to build this mass so you can avoid that accountability, that shame, that vulnerability, and that guilt. The hard part for everyone else is you end up falling in love with the mask, not the person behind it. Sometimes people are like, well, I can sometimes see like the little boy behind there. I can see the little girl who's crying out. But the problem is they're unwilling to lower the mask. They're unwilling to be honest with who they actually are to change their behavior. When you look back on the relationship, you might look back and be like, was it all fake? Was it all lies? Because you start to realize and you start to see the patterns that it was a lot of manipulation. It was a lot of manufacturing emotions, manufacturing and grooming you to fall in love with a mask. One thing I want to encourage you today is that the love you had for the toxic person, the love you had for the narcissist was real to you. I think a lot of times people discount that and it's okay for it to be real to you and it not to be real to them it means you can treasure some of the happy moments but you have to acknowledge the negative ones so you don't minimize it and so you don't go back but what you do have to understand is what you remember what you see the mass that was put up that you're locked into that hope that potential that trauma bond that's built in the cognitive distance you have to understand that underneath the mask the narcissist does not care they don't care about you 
They don't care about the kids. They don't care about the dogs. They don't care about the pets. They don't care about the job. They don't care about the boss. They don't care. What they care about is the people that they bring into their life are all means to an end, whether that's money, whether that's relationships, whether that's sex, whether that's leverage, whatever it might be, those are all means to an end. And the fact that you fell in love with a mask doesn't make you a stupid person. What it means is that narcissist was adept, adept at grooming you to fall in love with something that was not real. You have to ground yourself, understand the truth of the situation, rewire your mindset to change the story so you can get free, not just physically, but also mentally and emotionally.